Hi everyone, I'm Norby Babos, CTO of SolarKit Hungary. Today I'd like to guide you through the process of commissioning a Solax inverter. Let's take a closer look at the initial steps required when setting it up for the first time. To get started, you'll need the Solax Cloud app for which we can create an account for you and install our profile. After that, just like with Huawei or any other manufacturers, you can add your own additional customers or installers to this account. Once you're in the app to commission the inverter, you first need to log out and then click on local connection in the top right corner. Here, similar to other setups, you need to scan the QR code on the antenna. Then log in to the inverter's internal Wi-Fi network with your login credentials. Once you're logged in, you'll have instant access to the current status displaying key metrics such as power generation and energy distribution. Additionally, if you have batteries installed, you can monitor their charge level and other relevant information. Here, at the top right corner, there's a small gear icon. Clicking on this will take you to the settings. You'll find the system on off option here, which allows you to turn the system on and off. We leave this setting till the end. Within the work mode settings, you can choose how you want to utilize the system for self-use, feed-in priority, or perhaps just backup mode. Backup mode is when the inverter provides power to essential loads during power outages, and that's what we aim to accomplish. Here we can see the settings mode. It will prompt for a password, which is the factory password, which is 2014. Once you enter this, you can access all the settings available on the inverter. There are two menu points here, the basic settings and advanced settings. Under the basic settings, you can find very basic things like time, language, etc. Some of you have asked about EPS mute. This is just an additional function that beeps every three seconds when it detects the battery. If you find the sound disturbing, you can safely turn this off. It doesn't indicate an error. You can configure the operation of different modes, such as self-use, which determines how long the battery should discharge, how much it should charge, and so on. Now that we've looked at the options in the basic settings, let's move on to the advanced settings. So within the advanced settings, you'll find functions that allow for more detailed parameterization of the inverter. If we proceed, we can see under safety, there's the network code that we can also select. Similarly, within the grid voltage parameters, we can configure network protection levels, specifying the voltage thresholds at which it regulates, and the duration of these periods during which it monitors the regulation level. We can configure the battery here, check what type of battery is installed, set how much it should charge or discharge, and determine the percentage at which it should stop charging or discharging. I recommend avoiding setting the upper and lower limits to 0 and 100%. Instead, we typically set the upper limit to around 95% to prevent fully utilizing the battery's capacity and the lower limit to around 5%. This strategy ensures that the battery isn't fully charged or discharged, preserving its lifespan. While this approach may result in a slight loss of capacity, around 5 to 10%, it significantly extends the battery's longevity, making it beneficial for the battery's life cycle in the long run. This is crucial for us due to the reverse power flow. Here we need to input zero, indicating that the system is in reverse power flow mode, ensuring that no power is exported to the grid. If we scroll down to the bottom, we'll find a section called P-Grid Bias. Here we can choose between the inverter and the grid. In systems with reverse power flow, it's advisable to select the inverter. This means it will attempt to draw energy either from the inverter or the grid if what it's producing is not sufficient. So obviously you need to choose the inverter in this case, and once you have set these two options, then I just forgot another crucial aspect, that is the phase unbalanced function, which can also redirect power back to the grid asymmetrically, although this function is generally disabled by default. Therefore, if you just install and activate it, it will produce power symmetrically. Hence, you need to enable the phase unbalanced function to allow for asymmetric power redirection. Once you have configured these three functions, your grid feed system is essentially complete, because as you've already installed the locks, the inverter is operational and the DC is connected. Essentially, that's the essence of grid feed. We're no longer feeding power back into the grid. What other settings do we have here? 
essentially similar to the others. We can set a new password, reset it. We have the flexibility to customize battery settings, especially when dealing with multiple batteries connected in parallel, as demonstrated in this scenario. In such setups, there's typically a master and one or more slave batteries. The master battery features a small dip switch on top, which allows us to indicate the number of slave batteries connected to it. In our case, with only one slave battery, we simply set the dip switch to position 1. From that point onward, the system handles all connected slave batteries uniformly. Another important aspect is how you can make the inverter accessible to the customer. To do this, you need to set up monitoring for the system via Wi-Fi. To accomplish this, you have to open another menu in the application. First, you need to log out from where you are currently in the inverter interface. Then, log in with your own account that we created for you. At the top left corner, there are three dots. Click on it, then select Wi-Fi connection. It will immediately bring up the same QR code scanner square that we saw at the beginning of the inverter setup. Scan the QR code on the antenna under the inverter. It's important to note that you should scan the QR code on the antenna, not the one on the inverter. After pressing Next, the system will guide you through selecting from the list of available Wi-Fi networks. Now check what our password was here. Connect your phone to the local Wi-Fi network. And once connected, go back to the application. It will select the Wi-Fi network and you'll need to enter the provided password to connect to the network. Now let's proceed with connecting to Wi-Fi. It's important to remember that it can only connect to networks operating at 2.4 GHz frequency. It won't detect 5 GHz networks. Solax has a new feature which will help with this, but in the meantime, it seems to have successfully connected. So Solex has a great innovation where they now have antennas that can handle VLANs and regular LANs simultaneously. There are also antennas that can handle 4G and VLANs. This feature enables you to insert a SIM card for ground installations, eliminating the necessity for wired or Wi-Fi internet access. Therefore, if you're setting up the inverter for a ground installation, you can simply insert a SIM card instead of requiring wired or Wi-Fi internet access, making the system operational right away. After successfully connecting the inverter to the internet, the next step involves creating a dedicated site for it and associating the user with that particular site. This entire process can be conveniently executed directly within the application interface. So when you log into our monitoring system and access your usage details, you'll see a monitor tab on the top left corner. Click on the three dots and you'll find an option called Add End User. Here you can input the customer's email address and choose a password for them. Let's check what the user's email address is for this specific location. Once you've provided the user details, you'll also need to input the site size, time zone, and location. You'll fill these out just like you would with other brands monitoring systems. At the bottom, under Add Device, scanning the QR code will connect the inverter to the site. and it will send an email to the end user notifying them that they've been registered to the site. And actually from now on, the customer can log in, you've given them an email address, you've given them a password, and you have to tell them that they can log into the monitoring and they can see their system and you can see all the systems they've installed. I would say these are the basic steps for the initial setup. However, if you want to explore further settings or customize them to your liking, you have that option as well. In the user manual, you can find a wide range of information, which can be very helpful, especially if you are setting up a system for the first time. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We're happy to help if you get stuck anywhere.